character. Yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another segment of a Mom of Many interview. I have my friend Carolyn Sauer here today, mom of six children from the States. She's going to share with us about her life, her experiences becoming a mom, tips and tricks to encourage other big family moms because she's walked this road now for many years. And we've been connecting through sort of like business connections and just encouraging each other. So I am so excited to share her with you and to hear from her as well, because as much as I'm a big family mom hey like we're all still on the road of life we're all still learning and we can learn from each other so thank you carolyn for taking time on this saturday morning to meet with me so why don't we just dive right into it and i'll give you the floor tell us a little bit about yourself where you live your family right now like what does that look like and just the, what you do what you like to do just nice to meet you tell me about yourself all right well thank you dara uh, like Tara said, my name is Carolyn and I live in Wichita, Kansas, which is South Central Kansas and Kansas. I like to think of it as kind of the middle of the United States, but some people think it's a little bit farther north, but whatever. Um, we're known for cows and land and uh, grain and, uh, you know, just boring stuff, so to speak. Um, but I have six children. Well, I guess I should say, first of all, I've been married for 17 years to my husband, Chris. Is that bad? I forget all the numbers once I had my first kid. Like, I forgot how old I was once I had him. Anyways, um, and so we have six kids. Our oldest is 16, and that's a boy. And then um, our second is 15, and he's also a boy. They are only 13 and a half months apart. And then our first girl is our third one and she's 13. And then we have another boy who is 11. And um, sorry, like we just had birth, like we just finished up all the birthdays. And so it's like, I have to add one. I used to be able to rattle them off. And now I'm like, wait a minute, they've changed. Um, so number five is eight. And that's also a boy. And then our last one is a girl and she's four. So we have um, two girls, four boys. And um, our girls are number three and six in the lineup. There you go. And so four to 16 is the age range right now. Mm -hmm. And you're in Wichita, Kansas, which of course I was like, I don't know, I think Wizard of Oz, but I've driven through Kansas. You're right. It is quite flat. <laughs> yeah, we have a section of rolling hills, but. <laughs> and you know what is what do you do what does your husband do what do you like to do for fun um my husband's in IIT he tells me what he does but I don't understand what he does I'm like mm -hmm, okay yeah you go do that you're good at that have fun um and then I'm kind of a jack of all trades like growing up my mom did home daycare and so uh, for 13 years of my life, there were lots of kids in our house, and so I started babysitting very, very young, um, much younger than I would let my kids babysit. There's no way I would have let them start when I started, uh, but then I worked in child care centers, and like one time in high school, I worked at an athletic club, and at the athletic club, I did birthday parties, I did the front desk, I did child care, and swimming lessons, so um, they kept me pretty busy. And then went off to college and got an elementary education degree and early childhood degree. Also worked in child care centers during there. Um, graduated from college and literally two weeks later got married. Like I wasn't even going to go to my college graduation because I wanted people to come to my wedding. I'm like, you don't need to travel that many times in a row. Just come to my wedding. I don't care about my graduation. Like I already did the work. Yay. Hooray. Like let's, I mean, I had a plan for my life and I was ready to get it started. Um, and then three, three months after we were married, we got pregnant with our first one. And uh, let's see, the first four are so close together that we never made it to a second birthday without another one being out. So I know yours are much closer together than that, but <laughs> I was just saying that's my average too, is by their second birthday, I have a newborn. Yeah. yeah. I think our average turns out to be like 22 months. So just, you know, right under that two year mark, but 
like my first year are just a tiny bit over 13 months apart. So, you know, they were Irish twin. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so that according to the plan, you said you had a plan and was that the plan graduate with your early childhood education degree, get married, start having kids. Well, I kind of really wanted to be married for about a year, maybe a year and a half before we started having kids, but um, I was totally, totally fine with how it ended up working out. I mean, I had names of my kids picked out before I even met my husband. And so <laughs> we, um, a lot of times people ask us, oh, so did you want six? And I was like, well, I wanted four. And my husband said he wanted two, so we compromised and we had six. So, you know. <laughs> That's how that math works. Right? I, um, the last two are, I mean, obviously they're pretty spread apart. It took us seven years to get the last two here where it took us only five to get the first four. So, you know, we had a little bit of a break, but um, so because I've had so much experience with kids, I kind of feel like kids have been my life. I mean, I taught for uh, five years before I stayed home and uh, yeah, kids have just kind of always been my life, but um, now I also teach bar forte lessons. I started working out because I didn't have the best mindset around my body after six kids and you know those really sweet old ladies at church that have the best intentions but I got tired of arguing with them about whether or not I was pregnant again because they're like oh you just have that cute little basketball and I was like well when you have long legs there's nowhere for the baby to go and so it's been stretched out six times I'm just always gonna have a little basketball um I mean you know like you can't really get mad at them because they're just the cutest sweetest old ladies but I did get frustrated having that conversation over and over and over again. Yep. So just started working out and then loved it so much that I started teaching. Um, yeah. And then right, right now, pretty much just um, I'm in the middle of writing a book. I know you've already written a book, which I'm so excited about for you. Um, so I'm in the middle of writing a book and um, like some hobbies I had before I had a bunch of kids. I liked paper crafting and hand lettering and um, like that kind of stuff. But for the most part, that's, I still have it out, like easily accessible if I ever, you know, have time to do it, but uh, it's not something that I do a lot right now. <laughs> do you do the artwork behind you? It's beautiful. This No, wow. that's all my kids' artwork, actually. They've done all of that, so. I love how you have it on display too. Like, <laughs> that gallery, that's so beautiful. That's, I mean, there's just so much being said right there that mm -hmm. it's worthy of being framed, worthy of being displayed. I mean, there's a lot, you know, instead yeah. of being like, okay, we'll stick it on the fridge and recycle it too. I mean, listen, right. a lot of recycling. Mm -hmm. that but I think that's really beautiful. I just wanted to say, I've always seen you in like different Zoom calls that we'll be in, you know, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I love her background. Yeah. But, and those frames are awesome because they're like shadow box frames. So you can actually store the artwork in there too. Oh, fine. So I probably need to open them up now. I'll probably wait till closer to um, Thanksgiving, but we have like some Christmas artwork back there and you can just move it to the front during certain seasons. And so it's storage, but it's also, yeah, it's Hello. awesome. That's good for you. I think that was my Christmas present like four years ago. So great. Um, the gift that he's giving, right? Yeah. And encourage your kids to do more. So you became a mom, like right at, right at a college. And what was that like for you? Cause you had all this early childhood education ever since you were a kid, you'd been around kids, you know? Mm -hmm. So what was it like for you actually becoming a mom rather than just a childcare provider? I actually laugh when people <laughs> ask me that question because, you know, ever since I was little, I just kind of knew that I, God had gifted me with this, you know, love of children and helping them develop. And so I always knew I wanted to be a mom. Um, in fact, if I could have like provided for my children the way I wanted to, I would have probably started having kids in high school, but I knew I wanted to be married and have, you know, stable jobs and stuff like that before we started having kids. So I did wait. <laughs> um, but the, I mean, that's just how badly I wanted kids. Like I was, like I said, I had a plan for my life and I was ready to get it started. Um, 
so yeah, then we got pregnant and you know, I remember giving birth and we were getting ready to leave the hospital and I seriously kind of had a small panic attack. Is that right? I'm like, are you serious? Like, you're just going to let me take this tiny baby and walk out the door. Like, I don't get a manual. I don't get a pamphlet. I, I just take this sweet little baby and walk out the door. And I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot fathom how someone who has never wanted kids, never planned on having kids, how they would feel in this moment. Because I have so much experience. Well, I mean, I knew the experience was different from having a kid 24 seven and them relying on you for everything. But I still had a lot more experience than probably 90% of the people that were having babies. And I was freaking out. You know, and my mom was out home waiting for us. So it's not as if we were going home to an empty house. I mean, I even had support at home and my husband was, you know, able to stay home for, um, I can't remember with the first one. I think he was able to stay home for a week, but, um, yeah, I don't know what, but I had a panic attack. I just, I couldn't believe that this was now like my full responsibility 24 seven, like this child relied on me for everything. So that was overwhelming. <laughs> it's so relatable. Honestly, I don't, there's probably most women that would be like, yeah, I had that moment. Maybe not at that exact moment, but at some point it all comes crashing in on you. Right. And some people say, oh, it's the hormones. And I'm like, there's that but not totally. Like you said, the right. weight of responsibility and the awesomeness of like, I could kill this person, right? Like right. not intentionally, but I mean, right. me too. but like, this is this, like they say, things get real. Mm -hmm. It's get real. And you feel like, right. how long until you begin to notice that easing off and starting to feel like, okay, I think I'm going to be okay. Um, I think after I got probably about three nights worth of sleep, not saying that it happened in three days, yeah. but um, cause you know how it is with a newborn, you just don't sleep a lot, especially in the beginning. So my guess is that it probably took about a week, but um, I noticed the amount of sleep really um, affected how well I thought I was doing. Yeah. You know, the whole mindset and you know, how I was seeing myself. So sure. yeah, well, lack of sleep. I mean, it's a form of torture, right? Right. <laughs> and after you have a new newborn, you totally understand that, you know, <laughs> that's what I tell people. <laughs> so now that, you know, you're not a newbie mom experiencing a minor panic attack and, you know, you, you've been doing this now for 16 years. What do you love about being a mom of six kids? You know, what does that look like for you? The love of um, I mean, I just, they bring us at least, they bring me so much joy and a lot of times entertainment, uh, you know, during this past, what, 18 months, two years with, you know, the staying home and all the craziness of everything been going on. It just really melted my heart because a couple of my big kids were like, I'm so glad we had Alyssa during this time because she was just so entertaining and this just would have been so much more boring without her. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I just love it when the siblings love each other that much. And, um, you know, like it just melts my heart when they help take care of each other and when they think about each other. I mean, just, you know, those moments where you're kind of like, okay, I'm not completely messing this up. At least I'm doing something right. You know, those <laughs> moments, I love yeah. those moments. <laughs> exactly. And they're good because we have, next question, what have been some of the challenges you've experienced as a mom, whether it was, you know, earlier, more recently, and, and what helped you go through them? Um, there's a lot. I mean, again, I came in with a lot of experience thinking, man, I got this, like, this is my gift. I am going to rock this. And being a mother is so difficult, even with all that experience and even the education, like it is so hard because every child is different. Every single child is different. And what works for one child has almost no effects on another one. Um, 
in fact, when I was working and we had the little ones, our daycare provider was like, yeah, your kids look alike, but they are completely different as far as personalities go. And um, it's hard to parent that because like I said, like my oldest is very, very sensitive like me. And, you know, if he was doing something we didn't like when he was younger, all we'd have to do is kind of give them like the disappointed look. And he'd be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, I'll fix it. I'm going to do it right now. And my second one was very stubborn, very stubborn. Um, This sounds bad, but like after we had him, I realized why people only have one kid. Like I I never under, I mean, not, I don't want to make anyone mad, but you know, very naive and pretty ignorant. But I was like, I don't understand how anyone could just want one kid. And then we had him and he was so difficult, so stubborn, um, you know, that there were times I was like, I, that like you would hear stories on the news of like parents just dropping their kids off at a gas station and leaving or a fire station and leaving. And I would always judge those parents so harshly, you know, and then God has his ways of anything you've ever judged anyone else for. He's going to find a way to put you in those shoes. Um, and so with that child, I was like, oh my gosh, I get it. Like I have all this experience and he is not our first one. And I don't know what to do. I mean, we had tried everything with him. Um, every time he reached a big milestone, it got a tiny bit better, but I mean, as a toddler, the only thing that would work was to take light bulbs away from him. Do you know how many things you try before you even think to take light bulbs away from your toddler? Wow. Like. I mean, he was just stubborn, but now he's the one that we get the most compliments on. Like I walk into the school and I see teachers literally almost running from the other end of the school to come and tell me how amazing he is. And I'm just like, you didn't know it when he was a baby. Um, so, you know, just like that huge contrast between just my first two was huge. And then um, like, as you get more kids, I feel like it's hard for the kids to understand that equal doesn't mean fair. Like they each need something different. And so since they're each getting something different, some of them perceive that as, oh, well, they're getting something better than me or that kind of thing. And it's, you know, that's really hard to help a child understand that, no, it's not better. It's not worse. It's just different. Right. But they don't see it like that and so um yeah that's uh, there's been so many things that are difficult I mean obviously the good far outweighs the bad but um yeah I mean you just you get tired and I feel like now my biggest the thing that's hardest is I just don't really feel like I have everything in me that I need for each of my kids because we have the teenagers, which in my opinion, I feel like they need a lot more emotional support. Like it takes a lot more out of me mentally to support them and love on them, but I still have a toddler and I feel like toddlers and little kids are so physically demanding. And I'm just like, I am not as young as I once was. And this just is not working well anymore. (laughs) There's that balance too, but you said you do also have the advantage now of the older ones assisting with the younger ones, which yes. is a dynamic no one has when they're all, you know, six and under, then you're right. just sick of it, especially if they're all too little to go to school or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you, but I will actually too. say, I feel like a lot of times yeah. I was a better mom when I had the four under four, mm-hmm. you know, I just, um, probably because we were kind of more like recluses in our house because none of them were in school yet. And so we could be, so there wasn't a lot of the pressure or expectations from, I guess the outside world, you know, we could kind of just huddle in our house and do our routine and, you know, that worked, but now there are just, you know, I felt like school sending the kids to school changed a lot of things because there's just a lot more um influences that you 
don't have control over. So yeah, when they're all home, it's just your little ducklings, right? Mm -hmm. forward. So what are some of the, your favorite tips and tricks that just have made your life as a mom of many easier, just more enjoyable for you, for the family? What are just maybe just a couple, because I'm sure you've got lots. <laughs> um, first of all, I would say um, start early with giving your kids as many choices as you can. And so that way, you know, there, there come times when your kids don't get a choice, but if they've had a lot of opportunities to make their own choices, I feel like it works so much better to be like, okay, well, you've had a lot of turns to make choices. Now it's mommy's turn and we need to leave right now. Like you don't get to choose what you're wearing for pictures or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> I think it helps a lot, especially as they get older as teenagers too, because they feel like they do have some control over their life and that they can make their own choices, that they're not relying on me and my husband to dictate absolutely everything to them. Um, also say, even though it takes a lot more time in the beginning, let them do chores right next to you when they're little, when they're excited about it, when, you know, they're toddlers and I mean, they, and they want to help yeah. like really, really foster that and be like, oh my gosh, you worked so hard on that chore. Now we're done. That's awesome. And I mean, have dance parties, blow it out of proportion so that when they get older, I mean, my kids, uh, they do quite a few chores. They don't do it as joyfully, but I mean, to be quite honest, I don't do my choice, my chores joyfully either, but um, like they know how to do them. Yep. And um, I would say the same goes for cooking, like get your kids in the kitchen as soon as possible. Uh, Cause one of my favorite things that I do over the summertime is each of my older kids has a day of the week and they are in charge of meals that entire day. They are in charge of planning it. They are in charge of making sure we have all the ingredients they are making. They are in charge of preparing, cooking, all of it. And that is like one of the best gifts I have given myself as a mother because during the summer four out of the five days I don't have to think about food great like I, <laughs> I feel like only moms who have a lot of kids can really understand the freedom behind that yeah. but, um, and yeah, you didn't have to go days. to a restaurant you know which sometimes can be a mixed bag mm -hmm. of waiting you're like is the food ever going to come because my toddler's like the crayons are over right <laughs> Oh, great tips and tricks. Thank you so much. Now, here's a question for you. How have you connected with God through the busy seasons of life as a mom? And what's helped you when you feel maybe like a disconnect or you're just like, oh, you know, I'm getting out of a, a healthy routine for me. Mm -hmm. um, I do find that that is key. A lot of times when I feel overwhelmed or stressed or just completely inadequate, I do step back and realize, oh, I've gotten away from like my Bible study time, I've gotten away from my time with God. Um, so, I mean, there's been tons, you know, each season, obviously it looks different. There has been, um, I mean, when I had a newborn, I would say I didn't hardly do anything. It would be, you know, like having the Bible study book or the Bible next to my favorite nursing chair. And, you know, when you're nursing, pick it up and, you know, sometimes you only get, um, you know, or verse or two in, but Hey, that's better than nothing. Um, I mean, nowadays you can have them on your phone, you know, back when I started becoming a mom, that wasn't really a thing yeah. back then. Yeah. I mean, it probably was, but I didn't have it yet. Um, I would say the time I felt the closest to God is, uh, in between our first big gap. So in between number four and number five, um, I was able to get up early in the morning and be up about an hour before any of the kids woke up. And I would spend 30 to 45 minutes doing my Bible study then. Um, even though our youngest is four, I still haven't gotten back to that. You know, it's just, that's what worked for that season of life. Um, one of the things I love the most is the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the first five app. It's F-I-R-S-T and then the number five. Mm -hmm. um, and you can use that as an alarm clock. 
And so you just set when you want it to go off. And I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the morning. It could be in the middle of the day, whenever you want. And it pops up scripture on your phone and you have to physically intentionally swipe it away in order for it to go away. And so there's really no excuse to not even read it. I mean, it's just one, you know, usually one, maybe two sentences. It's not very long. Um, And it's great because you can scroll down and they have like a Bible study section. If you want, I usually just kind of read the summary. Um, And I would do that like before I would even get out of bed to go to the bathroom. Like I would, the alarm would go off and I would, you know, take the three to five minutes and read the scripture and read the summary. And then that's all I would do. They do have options where you can click and go deeper and, you know, go deeper into the Bible study, but it's all just what works for you. Um, Mm. The thing that has been working the best for me is a lot of times I will hang up prayers on my bathroom mirror or on the um, door to where the toilet is. And so when I'm brushing my teeth, I am reading the prayer. Um, When, you know, you're in the bathroom, a lot of times you have kids in there with you, but you know, you can still read while the kids are in there with you and that kind of stuff. So, um, I mean, right now I'm fortunate enough to be part of an actual Bible study and I lead a small group. So that keeps me accountable now. Um, But yeah, just a whole tons of tips, but it has looked different throughout so many of the years, just because the season of life is just different and just make it a priority and get it in. Just find what works for you and know that in two, three months, it might have to change, but just make it a priority and make sure that it just always gets in there somewhere. Here you go. (laughs) Do you work uh, outside or inside of the home? And how, how do you fit that in your life as a mom? Um, Well, when I teach bar classes. Yes, that's outside of the home, but those are usually only 40 minutes to an hour. And I am scheduled, I think three to four times a week for that. Um, so yeah, that's outside of the home, but I don't know if I necessarily consider that working outside the home. Cause it's such a small amount of time. Right. Um, when I had our first three, I was teaching And so uh, I taught full-time for two years. So the year I was pregnant and the year after I had um, our first. And then after that, since the second one came so closely, they were both considered infants and childcare for infants is really high. And so we couldn't afford the childcare. So I went down to working three days a week um, and I worked three days a week for three years. So I taught for a total of five years. And then after, um, after we had number three, but we were pregnant with number four, um, that's when I started staying home. It just didn't make sense. My husband had switched jobs and gotten a a raise to where he was like the raise amount was only $3,000 less than what I was making a year. So by the time you take out childcare, we saw more money. By the time you take out all the things I was spending for my classroom, we saw more money, you know, so, um, but other than that, no, I just kind of, kind of work from home. Um, Like we met through Martha. And so she is really great about helping you learn how to work around your family and still making your family a priority and fitting in work in the tiny pockets that you have. So that's what I've been doing for the past, well, probably two, three years. Okay. There you go. So last question, and then we can tell people how they can get in touch with you. If you could go back to when you were, you know, that young mom shortly after you had the panic attack, or maybe in that first season of life with your Irish twins, what words of advice would you give yourself then, you know, for a young mom who's like you just walked in the door? And it's like expecting number two, you know, and baby number one hasn't even hit their first birthday. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say accept help, Mm -hmm. accept the help. And if no one is offering to help, ask for help. Um, I know, especially with my first, I felt like since we had him when we were fairly young, I uh, 
just had it in my head that I had to prove to people that we were old enough and mature enough to handle this child. And so I did everything. Like I would barely accept help. Uh, and in the process, I ended up hurting some people, like especially some grandparents, because I didn't let them um, help as much as they wanted to. I didn't let them be involved as much as they wanted to. And I mean, that was not my intention by any means, but we just, um, you know, we got married fairly young and then of course had kids right away. And so I just felt like the stigma of, oh my gosh, they are just such young parents and they can't handle this. And, you know, so I was just on a mission to prove that we could do it and we could do it well. And, um, yeah, I would say accept the help, ask for help if no one is offering. Um, and especially in the early, you know, like the newborn stage, just let go of all your expectations. You know, um, obviously, yes, you take care of your baby, but you also really need to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so if that means asking someone to come over and hold your baby while you take a shower, then, then do that. Um, you know, just really take care of yourself because I know that there were so many times where I didn't do that. And now I don't even remember a lot of the things that happened during that time. And it makes me sad, mm -hmm. like, especially after number three was born, um, I mean, she was our first girl and I was so excited to, you know, have a girl, always wanted a girl. Um, I really don't remember her being a baby. I don't. And it makes me so sad. Uh, but, you know, the other two were really young and they found out really fast that when mom's feeding the baby, we can try and do stuff we've never even thought of before. Right? So let's try and do all this cool stuff that we wouldn't normally even think about doing. And, you know, right. so it was just, um, I wish I would just have let a lot more things go and stopped being what I call like a momager and enjoyed being a mom, you know, like enjoy that time because even now, even now I miss it, you know? Like when, you know, I missed the baby stage. I missed the teeny tiny. So anyways, that's probably would be my. Those are beautiful. Thank you. So if people wanted to get in touch with you, what would be the best way for them to do that? What's kind of your top ways to, to really get in contact? Um, I have quite a few things listed on a website, mylittlebitoflife.com slash find Carolyn. I have a link to my Facebook group, which my Facebook group is busy and stressed to balanced and blessed moms, um, where I really kind of focus on, you know, a lot of us are just really, really busy nowadays, especially if we have kids and activities. And a lot of people ask me, Hey, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a professional taxi driver because I just drive my kids around all the time. And so it's for, you know, moms like that, who again, have gone from um, who have like kind of lost the joy in motherhood because they're just, oh, I got kids here and we got to eat here and we got to make sure laundry is done here so that the uniform is clean for this. And, you know, like all of that. And they're not like, they're missing out on the joy of their kids um, while also giving some tips of, okay, well, my toddler is having a meltdown and we're already five minutes late. Like I need to get them in the car. How do I do that without losing my mind? I also give some tips on that because let's just, you know, that happens. <laughs> yeah. It happens to all of us. Right. Absolutely. Even <laughs> we're like experienced veteran moms, right? Four-year-olds mm -hmm. are still four-year-olds, no matter their birth order. Right. So there's that. Right. <laughs> you might have strategies you didn't have when it was your first four-year-old or your mm -hmm. second, probably four-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> For you. <laughs> Great. So, well, thank you so much, Carolyn. I mean, I've been encouraged. I got some tips and tricks out of this, which I so appreciate. And it's always so wonderful just connecting with other moms and realizing we're not alone. Our experiences are very common because motherhood can be naturally isolating, especially in the early years. So I hope for anyone who's caught this now, you know, more recently or in the future, this has blessed you. Feel free to comment below and I'll be sure to include all of Karen's links. So if you want to get in touch with her, find out how you can be a more balanced and de-stressed mom 
how you can give your kids more choices and deal with those, you know, very relatable mom situations, like the meltdown when you're five minutes late. So then you can get in touch with her and, and just glean from her. Cause she's got like, this is a short interview. We could have talked for hours, right? There's so much stuff that moms of many have learned, even if we don't realize it's high value stuff. Cause we didn't learn this in school. Cause they don't teach this in school. There is no manual you leave the hospital with. And I almost threw the, what to expect when you're expecting book across the room one day, as much yeah. as it's a book, it has certain value, but there's so much stuff you only learn in the school of life. Right? Yeah, that's not my favorite kids, book. <laughs> your kids at such a time as this, it's unique. Cause each child is unique and you're unique and you're changing in your seasons of life. So Plug in with other moms is one of my big tips. And Carolyn is a great one to plug in with. So thank you again, Carolyn. And we'll look forward to seeing you. I'll see you later because our life overlaps now. And I'm so glad it does. All right. Take care. Thank you.